What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today uh, we're going to be putting the engine back into the E30 except this time with the transmission. So as you guys see, I finally got the transmission bolted onto the engine. I also uh, put the intake manifold on and I started assembling like most of the engine things back together. So for the most part, a lot of the things on the engine are uh, back on. The only thing that's missing is the wiring harness, which I already ordered. I had a pre-made one. I was initially going to wire it myself, but I'm kind of in a rush to finish up this build because I have two other E30s in my driveway and then I still have my E90. So I really want to finish this car so I could start uh, driving it and moving it around like my uh, my driveway and stuff because I eventually want to fit two E30s in here and then eventually start reorganizing this garage and probably make like another shed or something so i could put like all the toolboxes all the tools all the stuff that i have in here into like uh another little shed so today what i want to do is um actually bolt down the engine uh with the transmission into the e30 and uh secure the transmission as well with the transmission that I, uh transmission brace that i have and then i want to fix the header situation since um if you guys saw my last video the headers the passenger side is very very close i don't really want to do this i really don't but i'm just going to end up cutting it and then i'm going to end up fabricating my own so as you guys see i have that half donut bend right there and i'm going to bolt the transmission up with the cut header installed onto the engine and then just uh, try to fabricate my own headers, tack them down there, and then pull the engine out again, and try to finish fabricating everything and just try to get some um, headers that actually fit and clear the steering shaft. So I have a lot of the main components um, to just start getting this whole thing put back together so we can actually get it running and get a first start eventually. That's gonna come very, very soon. So um, I got an E34 coolant tank. I have so many parts, guys, that um i honestly don't even know where to start but we're gonna take it step by step and just get this thing finished up so like i was mentioning i got another e30 and i actually want to show you guys it. i actually have two e30s and i haven't revealed anything to you guys because i've been so busy the past couple months i've been buying a lot of cars and selling them and sometimes i honestly just don't really have time to make as many videos as i really want to but i'm gonna show you guys my e30 right now that i actually have time all right so um my E30 Vert, I don't think you guys have seen this on the channel before. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it in the background, but um, I have an E30 Vert. It's very, very, very clean, and that's why I have it underneath the car cover. I got this car for an extreme deal, guys. Like, if I were to show you guys the condition that this E30 is in, and I told you guys I got it for $1,000, you guys won't believe me, but I bought this out in um, Palm Springs. I drove it about an hour to my house, running and driving for $1,000, guys, and... It's literally like one of the best E30s I have seen in a while. It doesn't have a cracked dash, has very low miles, it has 165,000. Um, interior is really nice. It is an automatic transmission, which kind of sucks, but the overall condition of this car just really, really makes up for it. So I'll have a full video on this car very, very soon. Um, just like showing you guys like the car in depth and stuff. But right now, I just kind of just want to tell you guys what I got going on. Um, I'll give you guys a little peek of it. If you guys want to see it. So it's white. It's very very clean the body's super straight there's only one side of the car that has like faded paint but it's really not that bad it's clean title no accidents any of that stuff and then that's the e30 that i just picked up um like two days ago i got this for a really really good deal i got this one for 800 dollars. this one does have higher mileage it has about 250,000 miles but the car drives amazing it was sitting for two years and um i jump started it with the starter fluid and everything and i was able to drive it to my house 50 miles so i'm really really happy to have this car this is actually something that i'm going to make into a project this one will be staying stock since it has very low miles i'm going to keep it original but my other e30 is going to be just it's going to be insane guys i'm going to stance it out i'm going to probably get bags on this weekend if i'm able to register it this week there's a lot of plans for this car and then i have my e90 right here that i still have i do plan on selling this i know this car was like a heavy hit on my channel and it kind of gave me the growth that i have today but it's honestly just time to move on to better things and i'll probably be getting a newer car like a m3 f80 something like that in the very near future but for right now um the values of e90s are going down a lot so it doesn't really make sense for me to keep it any much longer. Otherwise, I'm going to lose a lot of money. So um, I do have somebody that does want to buy it. And I plan on selling it just for that reason. Um, E30s are going up on value. So it makes more sense to keep that as a project. 
and then later on just invest into like a M3 since those retain a lot more value. So it's more on the on the money side of uh, of things. I would love to keep it, but I honestly just don't have the space for it. And I've honestly done so many things with this car that I just think it's time to move on. But definitely gonna miss it, and it made what this channel is today. It made who I am today, and there's just so many memories behind it. And I think I'll make a full video just talking about this car because there's a lot of sentimental value behind this car and it sucks to let it go but like i said guys it's just going to be for the better of my future and it just only makes sense to let it go right now from a logical standpoint so yeah that's all my car situation right now i bought many cars in the past like i've had a few uh i think i had one e92 had an e90 i had an x3 i flipped all of those so i've been buying a lot of cars and just reselling them and that's kind of just what i've been doing um to have just extra income just to like build my cars and stuff and you know just live a great life i guess but let's get back into the e30 i really want to get the engine in today uh cut the headers and then uh try to modify them today see if we could get everything to fit perfectly so um, I'm probably gonna pull it out just a little bit and we'll get the hoist and try to bolt up the engine by myself and see if we could do that. It's gonna be pretty intense with the actual transmission. It weighs a lot, guys, so I'm really interested to see how this is gonna work out. But as I really hate to do this, I do have to remove the insulation from the firewall so I could bang this portion in uh, for the transmission. Um, obviously, that thing is really giant, so this is one of the clearance issues that you'll have with the transmission. So. I do got to take off the insulation from the firewall. I really, really didn't want to, and I tried to bang it in without removing it, but it just doesn't work. It's going to require some heat on the metal and then just hit it with a, with a rubber mallet, and it should be able to go in. So I'm going to remove the insulation, and then later on in the future, I think I'm going to get like some sort of black insulation. I want something that looks very, very close to OEM. Um, I'm very like an OEM plus guy. I don't really want to put anything too flashy like like gold tape or any like silver reflecting heat tape and stuff like that. Um, I'd rather just keep it black and uh, just have it look original. So I'm going to remove this right now and then uh, just bang in the transmission tunnel so we could have that extra clearance for uh, transmission. <laughs> I think that should be enough of the banging for the transmission tunnel. Should clear now. If not, we'll pull it out, bang it in some more. But I did bang it in a lot, as you guys can see. A little tired, but um, now I'm gonna cut the header right here, uh, the last area before um, it was banged in. So um, yeah, it's gonna be the idea with that. Just cut it, install it on the engine, and then get the engine transmission bolt inside the car so I know where the engine is going to be positioned at exactly and then we have this donut bend that I got off of eBay and we're just going to make it until we get something nice around the steering shaft and we have uh, at least like an inch of clearance that's going to be my goal so uh, let's cut this up as much as it hurts me because I feel like I'm not going to do as much of a good job welding it like this but um, we gotta do what we gotta do and we gotta make sure that this fits right so I don't have to take out the engine when I'm done with the swap if I were to just leave it like this so let's cut it up. All right, so let's get the engine in for one of the many last times that we're gonna throw it in, I guess. So, um, transmission's on, everything's good, tunnel's banked in. 
So let's see if this thing actually fits. I also have the transmission brace right there, already fabricated, ready to fit with the with the Jetrag 420 transmission. So um, we shouldn't have an issue bolting it down, but let's see what we run into. So let's get in there. So about like an hour later, I was finally able to get the trans, uh, I mean the engine and the transmission in. I uh, finally got it bolted down. I'm not going to lie, I struggled quite a bit. The transmission is a very, very tight fit and it does hit um, against the transmission tunnel. So um, the next time that I pull it out, I'm going to bang it in even further. Like close to where the shift knob is at is where I'm going to start banging in a little bit more and see if we can uh, free up some clearance there. But I finally got it all bolted down. The engine mounts are bolted down. And now I'm working on getting the transmission brace on and I'm going to get these new uh, Condor uh, transmission bushings on and that should be it as far as installing the engine and transmission. So I'm going to put those on and then I'll show you guys what it looks like all on the floor and stuff. So let's get these bushings on. All right guys, so fast forward a couple days. Today is actually Saturday. So um a couple things that i actually want to do today is take out the engine transmission again i know i literally just got it in but there's something wrong i feel like there's something wrong the engine looks very very tilted i don't know if you guys can see it on camera but it's very tilted towards like the firewall and i think the only thing that's really going to help out align the drive line is going to be putting the suffering spacers back on it's pretty unfortunate that i do have to take it out but i did have to take it out anyway i do have a lot of other parts that i do want to put in but um this is probably going to be one of the very uh several times that i pull it out because there's still a lot of test fitting and stuff going on but um yeah i have a engine harness i do have to do the headers again you guys already saw that i cut them so i have to redo that stuff um yeah just gonna pull it out a last time for right now and uh, get the subframe spacers on i'm gonna bang in the transmission tunnel even more just to get more clearance for that big ass transmission because it's hitting pretty bad i think there's like a couple studs that i have to knock off too but i'm just gonna bang it in a little further underneath like uh where like the shift knob area is at just to make more clearance for it i think it should fit a lot better so uh i'm gonna take out the engine and then uh we'll get the subframe spacers in again Okay, so I got the transmission tunnel uh, banged in a little bit more, and then I also grinded off some of the studs that were left there, and I think it should have some better clearance, and there shouldn't be anything really interfering that much with the transmission anymore, so I hope that this time that I put the engine in, it fits a lot better. Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually make some adjustments to the driver's side header. 
I'm gonna try to get it to fit around the steering shaft. So um, I think I'm just gonna do like a lot of trial and error on this. So I'm just gonna tack weld it and just see what fits best. So as you guys saw, I cut it earlier in the video and I'm just gonna weld it at a different angle. So this is where it was hitting. So I'm just gonna weld it at an angle further from where it was hitting and I think it should clear um, well at least I hope it does so I'm just gonna tack weld it every time and I know this is not gonna be the last time that I take the engine out anyway so there's gonna be multiple times that I have opportunity to get it perfect on the steering shaft so every time that I take it out I'm gonna make some adjustments and then I'm just gonna finalize it based off of that so um, I'm gonna go ahead and actually finish up those uh, tack welds on that and I'll show you guys what it looks like once it's finished and then we'll get the engine and trans back inside the car and just see how it fits Alright, so I got this all welded up. Um, I know it looks really, really shitty. It's just like a little mock-up that I want to do. I want to see if putting uh, this part at this angle, if it's going to work with uh, just clearing the steering shaft. So um, I'm going to bolt this back onto the engine and then we're going to test fit it and see if this clears. If it does, then I'll get another piece welded inside of here and we'll cover it up 100%. Uh, just like the guy did right here came out pretty good so i'm gonna probably do the same thing if this actually ends up working out so uh let's give it a shot let's get the engine and transmission inside the car and let's see how the headers fit all right so i got some pretty bad news um yeah this really sucks so um engine and transmission are back in the car looks a lot better engine is not as tilted as it was before so um I guess that's the good side of things. The headers look like they clear. I already put the car on, on, on its own weight. Checked it cleared. Everything is good. But when I got to bolting down to the transmission, for some reason, the driveline is not aligned. And I'm not really sure what it is at this point. I'm thinking since I bought this engine swap specifically for an E30, when I bought it, it had like, I guess, E30 engine mounts. Apparently, they were all garagistic and stuff like that. Um... I'm starting to think that these engine mounts were probably fabricated by somebody else or I, I really don't know what the issue is at this point but so the transmission is off alignment it looks like it's not in the center and I'll show you guys what I mean right now in a second I'll show you guys everything as to why I think it's not aligned um, I, I, I just don't really know what it is at this point I really think it's going to be the engine mounts I don't really see it being anything else i don't know if maybe just um unbolting the engine mounts and then aligning the transmission with like a pry bar is gonna work but at the same time i don't want to put too much force on it like if it's not aligned to be in that position i feel like there might be something wrong i don't know if i'm just like really overthinking it and the bad thing about it is if it is the engine mounts i am going to have to either maybe reposition some things inside the engine bay like the brake booster i aligned it accordingly to where my engine was at right now so let's say the new engine mounts you know kind of throw the the position of the engine off a little bit further closer to the brake booster or something that means i might have to refabricate certain things i might just be overthinking at this point but just worst case scenario something like that might happen just with my luck but um i guess i'll just show you guys what it looks like from the bottom of the car so if we take a look at the bottom of the car let me get under here i don't know if this is a little too bright but let me see if i could focus it all right so i don't know if you guys could really tell but here is where um the engine mounts are supposed to i just took it off just fell off whatever so the hole is like right here somewhere it has to be it's like somewhere right here so as you guys see this little fork where the mount is mounted and bolted to is right here and it doesn't align with it and then this side over here is the same thing it's just off alignment as well and if you guys look at the the entire drive line from like this back portion here you guys can see that there's a lot more space on this side and there's less space on this side again this is an engine swap and i know some things are probably not going to fit as the original ones but I just feel like it's very very far off and then not only that but the fact that I can't bolt the transmission brace with the engine with the transmission mounts on it just says a lot that pretty much the the whole drivetrain is just off alignment and I just really don't know what it is at this point I mean you know the 
engine mounts like bolt up perfectly um i don't know if it might be like the transmission cross member uh, if it's like crooked or something but um it's just very very much off alignment right now and i just don't really know where to start i mean i don't want to just keep throwing money at it and then you know it not fix the problem so i'm probably gonna do what i told you guys earlier is just unbolt the engine mounts try to move it with the pry bar and see if it's just like not too much force bolt it down here and then just tighten those bolts in the front over there and see if that's gonna fix the problem but aside from that everything fit really nicely i'm gonna show you guys the headers right now so let me see let me get closer over there all right so i'm trying to get a pretty good angle of this i'm kind of holding the light and the camera at the same time so it might be a little shaky but i don't know if you guys could see that but i have about like a finger half an inch gap from the headers so if it's perfectly where it's at right now but again like if i have to change out the engine mounts this position of the header might have to change a little bit so i won't be able to finalize anything right there either until i figure out why the drivetrain is just not in alignment so we're gonna have to figure out a lot of things here see why the transmission is not fitting right but this looks really good right here but yeah like i said i really don't know what it is at this point if you guys have any idea as to what you guys think it might be um i don't know i'm kind of clueless at this point but like i told you guys it's probably going to be the engine mounts or i might just be able to pry uh the transmission and just get it to fit but um we're just gonna leave it at that i know this video kind of sucked and it was all over the place and it was on like the span of like a couple of days and stuff but you know i try to i try to do as much as possible in a, in a video so it's not like super boring and stuff and i think this is probably one of the one of the worst videos yet but i mean just to show you guys that a lot of these things um they don't really just go as everybody thinks they should like you know a lot of people think that you just do an engine swap and it just goes really smooth and and you have a nice v8 but it's a lot of trial and error and some things are just not going to work out so um i'm just gonna leave it at that um you know it kind of sucks that this stuff didn't work out and i really wanted to finish up some things like uh finish welding up the headers and just bolting up the transmission and just move on to other things because if i was able to get all this stuff done i was gonna get the harness i already have a pre made harness i just need to get the actual main harness for the engine and we'd be able to get a first start already so um i was really hoping that this would be like the end of it but i just got to figure out why the engine is not fitting where it's supposed to be but um we'll see if we can figure it out but anyways on that note thank you guys for watching another video again i apologize for like this video just being over like the span of like the past week or so but it was like the best that i could do and i'm just gonna try to figure out the situation with you know the alignment of the drivetrain but thanks for watching another video leave a like comment down below subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video peace out just wait for me if you can't you won't see